Hi there. Once again, uh, I'm Tercy, and I want to welcome you to the Unreasonably Grateful podcast. I don't know about you, but every week when I climb up these stairs to sit here in my office and spend a few moments with you, I find myself just experiencing being grateful, being grateful that you're there, that I'm here, that we have one another to share in this journey that we're on together. Whatever your journey may look like at the at this moment, um, consider that you're right where you need to be and uh, that we're here actually to support and encourage and to share stories with one another. So thank you. Thank you for being here. So, you know, I'm excited that we have this time together. And I just want to remind you that I don't have your answers. You do. I'm simply sharing my journey in the hopes that it impacts your life in a powerful way and gives you a little bit more freedom, uh, the opportunity to deal with whatever you're dealing with in perhaps a more powerful and meaningful way. And I just I'm letting some of the wisdom that's come through my 37-year journey of recovery now just trickle out and to expressing gratitude as a place that you and I come from, not some place that we'll ultimately or eventually get to. And I learn as much from you as you may glean from me. And uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, again, that we have one another and that we hear. So right now we're in this series where I'm just reading you a story from my newly released book. And I decided to video it because I felt like it was more personal. You know, we I'm not from the technological generation and I've learned to navigate it. Okay, but not great. And um, I just thought it would be great for those of us who could to be able to just see one another now, I get. I don't see you, Um, but somehow recording, it makes it feel like you're a little bit closer. So this particular story is called Uncanny Guidance. And this week, one of the things that's come up with a few people that I've talked to is just, oh, how we, how we want to be in control, how we want to do things the way we've done them that we feel still works. And so I just want to share with you a little bit more about what it's like to be guided from that internal wisdom that we all have and that sometimes we may follow it and sometimes we don't. Okay. So for those of you that have the book, this is a story on page 28. It's chapter 12. And the date that I reference here is 1990. So this is still fairly early in my recovery. I continued to be guided, and I listened, and also obeyed. I started brushing my teeth and my hair, holding the brush with my non-dominant hand. It sounds so simple, and yet it kept me present, alert, and out of my habitual ways. I drove different routes to wherever I was going, sometimes letting myself experience the feeling of being lost or out of control. It felt good to just let go and trust in this small way. I spent at least a year saying, I don't know, to almost every question that was asked of me. I was so used to being asked questions and having quick responses, even if I didn't even really know the answer. I just made up something. In other words, I lied. The space that was created in not knowing allowed me to show, slow down and take deeper breaths. I also began to discover more about others and myself. I discovered I didn't know when I was hungry or full. It was uncanny, even scary. So I waited, usually having a glass of water 
and sitting still, slowing my world down a bit. I started looking at menus when dining out and asking myself, what do I want? Focusing on where my wanting was coming from and how disconnected I felt from those wants sometimes. I was afraid to want. In my world, I had it connected to being selfish. I can still recall the day I realized that what I actually wanted was good for me. I wept. Whenever I would recognize the distraction or old ways sneaking in, I did something simple. I sat down. It didn't matter where I was. It could be the middle of the street or an aisle in the grocery market. Sitting down would give me the time I needed to be attentive. Fortunately, my children thought this was fun, and their acceptance and freedom freed me. We would laugh together. So the tidbit from this says, you can create new practices that will support your healing. So just consider for a moment that we've all developed practices that actually create the reality or the experience that we're currently living inside of. And you're not stuck with those practices. You can design and create new ones from a healthier place. So for me, sitting down was, you know, it was odd. What happened is as soon as I sat down, my ego would shift from its drive or attention towards my habitually learned patterns or my addiction to some version of looking good. Like, whoa, this is weird. You don't just sit down in the middle of a grocery store or the middle of a crosswalk on the street. And as soon as it began to worry about looking good, what happened is its grip on my habitual or addictive patterns loosened and I had a little bit of freedom. I could get up and cross the street or get up from the grocery aisle and continue my shopping. But what it did is it just created space. And mostly that's what we need. We need a little bit of space from that all-consuming addictive grip that our patterned way of living has kind of left us with or developed. And when we have that space, then we have that moment where we can begin to direct our attention. So I just want to remind you, your attention is your worship power. What you're attending to is what you're worshiping. And we as a species get to determine what that is, the only species I know of. And we can change our mind or shift our attention, creating new awareness. And so you just want to make sure that what you're attending to supports your ongoing growth and development or your healing. And the space that's created by diverting that sort of egoic mechanism that keeps its attention on distracting you from simply being present, and it leaves you in either the past, oftentimes regretting or remorse, I wish I had, if only when, or the future, I'll be able to when this happens, or once I have this, then fill in the blanks. But it's right here in the present where everything is that has value to you, that has meaning to you. Gratitude is one of the ways of knowing your mind. It can bring you into the present moment. And distracting the ego, giving yourself a little bit of space and freedom will allow you to be able to put your attention, selectively choose what you want to attend to or what you want to worship. So I highly recommend that you start to look at the patterns or the habits that you've created that have constructed the world you're living in that may be the result of your addictive, destructive, or just maybe slightly unhealthy habits. And instead, you can begin to create new practices that actually guide you on a healing path. Okay? So this week... See if you can't look at what are some of those habits that keep you in that 
familiar rut and maybe even feels like successful one? And what are the new patterns or habits you could begin to create or step towards that would support you in the life you're actually more committed to living, the life that you're inspired by? Once you've identified those, see if you can't create some some trigger, something. For me, it was sitting down. It could be anything, but something that grabs your attention and frees it from that addictive pull and gives you the opportunity to refocus it onto a new pattern or way of being. Okay? All right. I'm cheering you on. I'm here for you. Have a beautiful, beautiful week, and I'll see you next week.